about YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the first of many, hopefully, uh, TKL, as in Top Karting Lads uh, installs. Basically about my uh, pro kart and karting experience. So if you've seen any of my previous videos about karting, um, I've got a pro kart called an, uh, it's Anderson. So it's a very old one, a bit of a classic, but it's got plenty of pedigree. And it was powered by two Subaru engines, uh, which are mildly tuned, producing just over 10 horsepower each, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got two of them behind you, it doesn't have to get you along. I mean, it was... It certainly held its own on track against other pro karts, and um, it, it even had a bit of a, a few occasions we mixed up with the road taxes. But I've just been thinking about building some proper race engines from scratch. So I sold the Subaru engines to um, Posh Boy Adam, and I started looking for alternatives. Um, I mean, the GX the Honda GX engines were just too expensive to start messing about because I don't know if I'm going to build it right or wrong. So I thought we'd use an expensive engine to just find out that yeah, Raj, you can't build engines. So you can get like a clone engine, which is like a Chinese copy of the, the Honda GX series. So what I ended up purchasing was an engine called the Predator. And there's two variants of this. You've got the uh, non-Hemi and the Hemi. This is the non, this, sorry, this is the Hemi. You can just see by the rock cover, as opposed to the non-Hemi, which is like a pressed steel uh, hexagon shape. Uh, the, the, they're both very similar. Um, it's just that they brought the Hemi out because there was some sort of uh, emission rules in California. So they made a, a, a cleaner burn sort of engine. Uh, that's since been scrapped, so it doesn't matter. But this non-Hemi is where all the tuning parts originated from. I mean, they've started doing some more for the Hemi, but that's the engine we're going to concentrate on. We'll do the non-Hemi first um, and see how we get on with that. So what my plan is for this vlog, we're going to unbox the engine, uh, get it on the workbench, get some uh, engine mounts installed, then put it on the dyno, give it a mild sort of break in. You know, we're not going to spend too much time on it. And then uh, we do say three power runs, just so we've got a nice benchmark to see what sort of power we have at the start. And then um, we're going to strip the engine completely to a bare carcass and then start uh, installing some very high performance parts to it and see what sort of gains we can get. Um, I've seen a few other vlogs on, on, on YouTube where they're claiming silly figures, uh, which I'm not going to be expecting. Uh, so what we're going to do is, because I've got my engine dyno, uh, which is situated over there, uh, we can see exactly what power we've got to begin with and how much of a gain we get from doing the modifications. But hopefully anyone else think about doing the same sort of thing will might maybe learn something. And if I do something wrong, please comment and let me know so I don't do it again because I'm just learning myself doing this. But uh, yeah, we just, just found a bit of a laugh and see how we get on. So enjoy this vlog and um, let's get it unboxed and let's get it on the dyno. Enjoy. Right, stood out of the way now, it's a bit noisy in there. Um, so the engine's broken in now, I've done a few little um, pulls with the uh, the flywheels to get a bit of load on the engine. So it's, it's broken in to an extent now, but what I'm going to do now is do a couple of power runs, do three power runs, um, just see where we're at. And like I say, I'm, I'm expecting like low six horsepower, Let's see how we get on. Stay tuned.
right, so uh, that's three runs done. Um, so you can see from the graph, we've got a uh, 6.1 horse, 6.2 horse, 6.1 horse, and a uh, 12.19 foot pound, 12.26, 11.68. So them, them results are pretty consistent. Um, so yes, engine looks pretty healthy, a bit low on power, but I think it's time to strip it down and turn it into a monster. So let's get turn it down. Right, so that's it, fully stripped. So I've took absolutely everything off it now, removed the governor, piston now. You can see the bore is absolutely mint. You can still see the cross hatching from its initial boring. But yeah, that's it now, fully stripped. So what I'm gonna do now is got some little holes, got a hole there, hole there, and a hole there, which is just what's left over from the governor. And the governor is, if you, if you don't know, it's a device that holds the revs to like no more than say three six, um, because end of the day it's like a pressure washer or generator engine so it's not meant to be revving it's meant to just like sort of tick over so now we've removed the governor um this should be able to rev to whatever we want well cam permitting so all i'm going to do is just basically put some bolts through there just just crudely but screw them straight through same with that one and this hole at the back i'm just going to use a nut and a bolt and a couple of copper washers then that should seal that all up and then we can start assembling it so we'll get them blocked off first and then we'll run through the parts we're going to install. So let's get these holes bunged up. Right, so I thought I'd go through the uh, the bits I'm planning on building and uh, installing on this engine. So we'll start off with the flywheel. So the standard flywheel, which is this big cumbersome thing, is just, uh, it's fine in standard trim, but as soon as you start removing the governor and uh, revving it past, say, five grand, um, they've got a bit of reputation for sort of leaving the building and taking whatever's in its way out. So the first thing you've got to do is remove the flywheel and install one of these bad boys. Um, this is probably one of the best of the best. It's from Arc. It's a billet flywheel. It's, uh, it's a beautiful piece of engineering. Uh, it's nice and light, so it's less parasitic uh, drag on the engine. And it's also not gonna fall apart when it starts revving up. It's, uh, it's advanced 32 degrees. Um, yeah, so that's that's a key thing. That's probably one of the most important things to install on your engine when you start de-restricting them and start tuning them up. Uh, from the same company, I've also bought a Arc Billet Conrod. Uh, unlike the standard one, which is, we'll put that. Ugh. Here's the standard one. The standard one doesn't reuse any shells, whereas the arc one does. 
Uh, it's also a lot stronger. It's just going to keep it all intact. Um, I found out the hard way on my Subaru engine. Um, I did actually break a con rod because <laughs> I was over revving it. That was on the standard one. So ever since then, I've always ran um, billet rods uh, just for safety more than anything. Uh, I've also got to the, to the rod is a flat top, flat top piston. So this is a uh, high compression piston. So you see it is completely flat as opposed to the standard one, which is dished. So a standard compression ratio, I think, is around eight to one. Um, I'm raising it to around, I think, 11 to one. I'm not exactly sure. Um, coupled to that is the cylinder heads. Now this is a fully worked head, bigger valves, fully ported. It really opened this up. Uh, it's also been skimmed to 14 cc on the head bolt. So again, that with the head flat top piston is going to raise compression. Then we've got this um, NR racing camshaft. Now this should give us a really nice uh, mid-range power because um, all this stuff's been bought from America. And um, I'm just cleaning the lens. Yeah, all this stuff's been bought from America, and um, they tend to use these engines on like uh, mini bikes. They're called. Uh, they're like sort of pit bikes in the UK, uh, but they're all they're mainly concerned about top end. Well, because I'm putting this in a go kart, you, you you see top end literally a couple of times on a track. If that, you spend most of your time around about between three and six thousand RPM mid range on the bends. So I didn't really want a leery camshaft with all the power top end. I want it mid range. Um, so this camshaft should give give decent power right across the rev range, hold the power. And I'm trying to aim for say between three grand and seven grand of like your window of power. So I don't want to be sending it to, you know, don't, don't be revving it to the moon and back because it's, it's got to be reliable. You know, I want to build it once and enjoy it. So that's the camshaft and I've bought a, it's a, it's a Makuni copy. You know, it says Makuni on it. It's actually a Chinese, they call it Chikuni. It's the, it's a copy of the genuine Makuni. Um, it's a 26 mil, I think. 26 mil uh, carburetor. And apparently people are getting good results with them, so I'm just gonna give it a go. Uh, there's a few other odds and sods, like uh, chrome alloy, um, push rods, stud kits, uh, just some spare shells, spare wrist pin. You know, just stuff you're not gonna be that interested in. So I didn't really show you much about the teardown because there's nothing to explain really, just take everything off. Um, but now is where you've got to be quite meticulous now about how you put the engine together. Make sure you measure everything um, and just make sure that you, you do it to spec. So I'll go a bit more in depth on this. But uh, hopefully we'll have it done. I mean, it's time now. It's half past two on a Sunday afternoon. If I can get it done pretty sharpish, we might be able to get on the dyno today. So let's get cracking. Okay, so that's the, uh, the piston and con rod all torqued down onto the uh, crank. Um, a lot of people who build these engines on YouTube, uh, they do a, a plastic age test to um, confirm the clearance from the con rod to the journal on the on the crank. Uh, I don't do that. This is personal preference. Uh, I don't like to reuse a stretch bolt which is supposed to be intended for one use only. So if you're, if you're going to do that test, I recommend buying another set of bolts so that we you use these bolts, tighten them down, do the plastic gauge test, take them off, put a fresh set of bolts in. I personally prefer just to just to fit it, torque it all down, and then just spin it freely with your hand. And I can just tell if it's binding, if it's not quite right, if it's spinning too easy. Um, I had on my last engine, there was an issue with the uh, crank. Um, the journal was wrong. That's by new crank, but I knew that just from you know just from turning it by hand. 
So it's entirely up to yourself whether you want to do the plus gauge test or not. Um, if you do, buy new bolts. Uh, if you look on, on YouTube, Red Beer's Garage, he shows you how to do that plastic gauge test, but I haven't done it and I don't do it. So don't shoot me down in flames. That's just my own preference. I'm not saying this way you should do it. It's just personal preference. Whew. Right. So next job is to put the um, the cam followers in and the, the lifters. Then the cam, uh, line it up with the dot. Got that in the right position now. Then put the side cover on, torque it down, and uh, then we can start looking at putting this Gucci uh, flywheel on. So uh, let's get on with that. Right, so that's the short motor built. Uh, it's all sorted now, it's all torqued down. It's spinning super freely. Uh, I'm actually quite optimistic about this engine build, actually. This feels really good. So we've got the head studs in, got the Loctite on them. I've used blue Loctite, that's all I've got in stock. Uh, background noise is the uh, weapon. Say hello, say hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Yeah, he's special, that one. But yeah, so the... The bottom end's all done. So studs are all locked tighted in. Um, so the next thing to do now is head gasket, head on. Uh, but we've got to do uh, we've got to do the lashing of the uh, the valves into the valve seats. Then we can put the head on and crack on from there. But yeah, that's the end of this video. Waffle on lock enough now. So yeah, thanks for watching. Next install, we'll see the top end going on, and it might have some down results. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon.